Hello and welcome to Technology Connextras, the second channel where I talk about stuff and don't prepare for anything. Which is a lie, increasingly often, because I do in fact have a list of things I want to go over with this video. And you're correct, the hair is a lot. But that's not what this video is about. This video is to tie up some loose ends regarding the hurricane lanterns. There is some stuff that I just did not go over at all in the main video. Um, largely because I, it was one of those cases where I figured this is something everybody knew, uh, but that was very, very bad assumption of mine. Typically, I like to explain everything, but um, there are some, I, I don't know, there are just some oversights that I made. I was looking through comments and tweets and stuff and have some things that I want to discuss. For instance, um, some people have been assuming that this adjustment is actually choking the air supply, so it's some sort of like oxygen valve, I think is how someone described it. And no, it's the same lift wicking and lower, lift licking? Lift, wick lifting. There we go, good gravy. It is a wick lifter. So it raises and lowers the wick and that changes how much is exposed, which changes how large the flame is. Um, so I'm eventually gonna switch the camera so you have a closer view and I'll move to behind it. But one of the things that like I didn't touch at all, touch at all was um, the fact that this lever lifts up the glass for lighting. Uh, I showed me lighting this I think only once and it was in the dark. So that's what, that's what this little thing is for. It pushes up on the globe, which exposes the wick below and you can light it. And I don't know how high the wick is. Not high enough. There we go. And then you put the globe back down and there you go, it's lit. I'm gonna put it out right away because the other thing I want to show you is some people have wondered what the metal around the glass is for. It's actually really quite straightforward. If you lift up on the chimney like this, actually it's easier to do like this you can just tilt this back. So really all it's doing is holding the globe in place. Let me turn it that way so you can see. It's just a wire cage for the globe. Mainly it's there just to hold it in place. It's the same deal with this one. This is a little harder to do that on, but again, you just tip it back and that's how you remove the globe for cleaning. And yeah, basically it just holds the globe. You bend it like that and then it comes out. But as a side effect, it does provide a bit of impact protection just in the odd, the odd bump. If it gets bumped right here, hopefully it will hit the wire and not the glass. But truthfully, I don't know how effective that really is. It's mainly just to hold it in place. On the subject of wicks, one thing that I wanted to bring up, which I didn't even discuss in the video at all, was you do still have to trim these wicks, but rather infrequently. All the time that this has been burning, this is the only thing that's happened to the wick. It's gotten slightly charred. Over time, this gets worse, but all you need to do is take a pair of scissors and just snip and basically just remove that tiny bit that's charred and it's good as new. So uh, one of these lanterns came with this length of wick and I feel like this is gonna last years, assuming that you aren't burning these with uh, too intense of a flame. This probably won't be visible with me in the shot, but I do wanna show if you really put, I don't know if you can see, I don't wanna do that for very long, set off smoke alarms, but if it gets really sooty, you can see that it's only coming out of this space here because again, the exhaust is actually separate from the intake, which is good. And the last thing I wanna mention while I'm on camera here is the, uh, I'm gonna level with you. The thing about cold air intakes on cars was mainly just a joke to make fun of people who put cold air intakes on their car because unless your car is extraordinarily terrible or electric, it already has a cold air intake. 
And the idea behind the cold air intake is that you want the air entering the engine to be as dense as possible. Colder air is denser than warmer air. And the reason why you want that is you have a given volume, so if the air is denser, it will have more oxygen. And that means you can produce more power for the same amount of, for every single uh, compression or power stroke of the engine, you will have more, every single complete combustion cycle. That word, that verbiage probably works. Anyway, you have more oxygen in the cylinder, so each time it fires, you actually can produce more power because there is more oxygen available. Whereas if there's hot air, you don't have as much oxygen, it can't produce as much power. In the case of a lantern, we don't have anything to do with uh, producing mechanical power out of it. We're simply burning the fuel and creating a flame from that combustion. So a hot air intake would theoretically help a lantern because assuming you have the same temperature increase from the combustion process, if you start out with hotter, um, with warmer air, then the same temperature rise will end up with a greater temperature in the end. The problem is I don't think for a lantern like this or really anything that creates light through a visible flame, that is going to matter. We are, we're really talking about just fractions of a percent of the total temperature here. This is incandescing, so this is given this color temperature, the soot particles are probably at least 2,500 degrees Kelvin. And the room air is many, 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 many degrees less than that. So even if we got the intake air up to say 200 degrees Celsius, which I don't even think would be possible without serious, like that would make the lantern quite dangerous, I would imagine. But even if we could do that, the end result I don't think would be significant. Now it is true that if the intake air were warmer, you could in theory evaporate the kerosene off of the wick more quickly, and that could make it more, could make it brighter. But honestly, I just, again, I don't think practically that's going to matter. Now, this is just me saying the reality turned out the way it did, but this lantern design, I've had it lit on the table now for, I can, I can look, it's probably been 10 minutes. I'll check the time code because I've been recording this whole time. This is still just barely warm down here. The, like nothing around the base of the lantern is warm. And this whole area, this bulge here, this is that void space where the intake air is coming from. It's slightly warmer than the tank, but nothing meaningful. Um, I can put, I can take a picture of this with the thermal camera so you can see that. Up here, this is now pretty hot after 10 minutes of burning, but it's still not so hot that I can't touch it. It's, it's getting there, but it's, it's not that hot. But down here at the bottom, barely warmer than room temp. I'm not, I mean, I'm serious. It's not hot at all. So, that was not something that Dietz wanted to do once uh, the Irwin patents had been refined into this design. And that doesn't necessarily prove anything, but I think that it's pretty good evidence that the preheating of the intake air just didn't matter in the end. And it was really just fresh air that was important. Right, the other thing. I want to be clear that my issue isn't necessarily, although I. I do still think it's not ideal, but these specific lanterns are really the problem here. There are plenty of portable light sources that are going to use um, gas mantles that are going to be much brighter, much more useful, much more fuel efficient, and cleaner. We're getting a little spoilery here, but the Aladdin lamp that I showed you at the end of that video it burns odorlessly. It's burning kerosene, just like this lantern, the same fuel, but there's no odor at all that comes off of it. I don't know if that's because the mantle is a little bit catalytic or if it's just because it has a more refined burner and actually does have much more complete combustion than the Dietz lanterns. I haven't looked into that yet, but these Dietz lanterns are really like the problem. This old style open flame lantern, it just, cannot burn anything that cleanly. 
On that note, people were mentioning, why am I burning kerosene and not some of the kerosene alternatives? Well, mainly it's because of the Aladdin lamp. That needs to run on kerosene or Aladdin lamp fuel, whatever that is probably just kerosene, but it can't use lamp oil or some of the other alternatives that these kind of can. But the other thing is, you can't just put any fuel in a Dietz lantern and expect it to work. Many will, but it needs to have a certain flash point or lower, it could be very dangerous. And um, some of them just won't burn cleanly compared to, um, compared to kerosene. So this burns quite well on kerosene, it's just, it's smelly, it literally is, smelly. It smells like an airport, I believe. Is, I phrased it in the pinned comment, maybe. I meant to put it somewhere in the video, but it smells like an airport down here after I've had these running for maybe an hour. So it's mainly just this specific ancient lantern design that's like the fact that people in the world still need to use these is sad. And um, But the thing is, these are incredibly cheap to make. They're just stamped metal and a bit of glass. So in fact, if I um, am remembering things right, it's the same tooling that's been producing these since forever, like the same exact dyes. They just were moved around the world um, and now they are in China. I think uh, that I read that Dietz moved production to Hong Kong in the 50s and then China in the 80s. I don't remember exactly, but the, like they literally just never stopped making these. They just keep going. And you know, on the one hand that's kind of charming, but on the other hand, it's incredibly depressing. So that's just a long winded uh, way for me to say that like, I don't necessarily have, I mean, you should ideally have access to electricity, duh. But if you need to burn a fuel for your source of light, there are much, much, much better lanterns out there that aren't so horrible. It's just, these things are ancient and uh, not good. Oh, also that's another thing I can show. Remind me to show you tipping one over. Now I'm gonna stop the camera. And one last thing I want to show, cause a couple people asked to see it, is it going out when it tips over. So I've just put it on this storage tote lid. So if it leaks, it doesn't hurt the table. See, the flame is in there and it's leaking out already. Hasn't gone out yet. Oh boy. <laughs> this has, well, it's actually out now. There's kerosene all over this thing. That's lovely. I didn't think this one was that full, but apparently it is. Yay. Now it's smoking out the top. The things I do for you, that was unquestionably high up on the list of dumbest things I have ever done. Uh, don't do that, ever. None of you out there, don't do that. Live vicariously through me. You can see why that was extremely dumb. And uh, I very much regret A, not checking the fuel level in the lantern, because I didn't think it was gonna leak out quite so profusely, and B, uh, doing this indoors, and C, not having a fire extinguisher at the ready if I was dumb enough to do this indoors. So luckily, nothing has gone up in flames. Everything has been neutralized. The lantern and the uh, storage tote are both in the garage, and the lantern has been extinguished and cooled off. So we are safe now, but uh, yeah. Wow, dumb. Oh, and now I'll introduce the end where there's a lot of blathering on over thermal camera footage, which probably has audio sync issues. So that'll be fun. Okay, so here we are looking at it with the thermal camera and you can clearly see at the top that the inner part of the chimney is what's the hottest. Um, very hot. I thought it would give me a more, I thought it could read higher values than that. But, and again, it may not be correct because of thermal emissivity, but the rest of it, is hot, but especially you can just see that the temperature rise by the time you're at the bottom, it's warmer. It's warmer than the room, but not by a whole lot. I mean, 30 degrees versus 22. So we've got a temperature rise of maybe 10 degrees and this has been burning for quite a while. 
So again, it's not preheating the intake air is just not something that seems to matter in the end. Uh, this is just, bleh, I don't know. I don't think it matters. It doesn't, it certainly doesn't matter enough that Dietz bothered to functionally make that happen. Okay, for grins and giggles, I thought I would record the hot blast heating up. If I can light it. There we go. So it is in fact lit. The infrared camera just can't really see that apparently. And also the parallax between the thermal camera and the visible camera is pretty bad, so just for the record, I need to turn that flame down a hair. You can see the top of it is already getting pretty warm. More importantly, I want to see the tubes at the bottom. They're not that warm yet, but they are definitely warming up. In fact, they almost look to be already not, not quite. Let's see, what is that? Like 30 degrees versus 35. So they're already almost as warm as the bottom of the tubes on the little wizard. I guess something that I hadn't thought of is the fact that because a lot of fresh air ends up making its way into the tubes, I mean, I know this hasn't been lit for very long, but the top of it probably doesn't get as hot as the cold blast lantern because that part there is literally only exhaust. There's no fresh air coming in there to cool it off. Whereas over here, you at least have some fresh air coming into that tube to keep it cool. You can actually see in person the heat coming off of these. I'm going to turn off the cold blast lantern because, again, that one is very smelly. This one's not so bad. Turn that down a little bit more. Let me feel this. You know, honestly, this is still pretty cool. I will let this keep going for a little bit, and then I'll take another picture. So it's only been about five minutes since I stopped recording, and you can already see that the heat tubes, especially south of the corners, um, they're still quite warm. Down at the very bottom... And remember, the image parallax is bad. I've turned the camera around. That's why it's now on the other side. Um, it's still not that warm. The bottom of the lantern hasn't yet really gotten any warmer than the little wizard, but which is what this one is called. That's no longer lit. Actually, can I? What's getting warm there? Oh, interesting. Some of this is reflection of the flame, actually, in the glass. But we're up to 38 degrees or so down there, compared to 24 of the table, so we definitely have a bigger temperature increase already. Tube is 30, and these numbers are very likely inaccurate. But what I was going to say was, twice already since I have lit this, I've actually needed to turn the flame down because it's grown slightly. Now, I've not played around with this enough to know if this always happens, but it could be that as the lantern continues to operate, the air that meets the burner starts to get warmer. 
because it's important to remember that these tubes here, you know, if they are still cool, which they appear to be, they're about the same color as my skin on my hands right now, they're going to cool the air back down as it travels down the tubes. Um, and in fact, that's mentioned in the original patent, which in this case, they help draw the air down because it's more dense at the bottom, I think. I don't remember what Irwin was going on about there, but in any case, it may be that as it warms up, the fuel evaporation from the wick gets faster, so it burns through more fuel, and that's why I need to keep turning it down. I don't know if that's the case. That may also just be because fuel is flowing. Um, the little wizard, the coal blast lantern, would sometimes do that as well, but it never did it over such a length of time that this one's been doing it. So I think it may very well be the case that the fuel evaporation is increasing in rate, but, and here's the big caveat, and I know you can't see it right now because you're looking at the thermal image, the flame has not gotten any whiter. It's just gotten bigger. So it may be that the increase of fuel rate is happening. There is an increase in the rate of fuel going through it, but it's not burning any brighter, and I'm sure it's not burning any more efficiently. It's just burning more fuel. So... Yes, preheating the intake air might make it burn more, but I don't really think it's burning better. And yes, we do. We can't really prove anything here because of the fact that the Monarch is recirculating some of its air, but I just think the fact that Dietz never tried to get any preheating beyond an incidental preheating once they moved beyond the hot blast design, it really just shows that preheating of the intake air didn't really matter. And... If these numbers are true, this lantern has been lit for something like 10 minutes now. Even it's not getting much preheating going on here. Some, sure, but not a ton. Let me get closer. It's, it's getting warmer. It's just, I don't know. I personally am skeptical that preheating the combustion air in a lantern really makes any difference at all, at least these open flame lanterns.